Welcome to this Lubuntu screencast. And in this screencast I want to share with you the information on how to create a backup of your home directory and the most important files in there. So the most important files in your home directory are besides of course images, uh, photos, downloads, music and video files that you might have. Also all sorts of configuration files for your different application that you installed. So for example I have an email client here, um, Sylphid, and I have all my contact data, all my emails saved there and also the account data is saved there and I want to save somehow the configuration file and the emails so that when I'm reinstalling or I'm buying a new computer and want to install a fresh new Lubuntu that I can copy just over this configuration uh, files and I have them on my new computer as well. The same goes for web browsing or the Internet Messenger uh, or some other applications that you might have installed. So basically what you can see here are only your files that you have now that are you that you are using but all the configuration files are stored in hidden directories basically and you can show or view these hidden directories by clicking on view show hidden. And here you can see all the hidden directories they all begin or hidden files they all begin with a point at the beginning as you can see here a dot, a little dot, and the most important one is perhaps the config directory. So the dot config directory. Here you can find mostly any configuration files of any application. So as you can see here, I have my configuration files for Chromium here, for Leafpad, Update Notifier, X Archiver, and many many more applications. So one nice thing would be just making a backup of this um, .config file. The easiest way to do a backup is just pack it into a zip, a tar bz or tar gz file. Just right click, hit compress and you can create a new archive with this directory and all its files. And another way would be of course copying it over to a remote networking machine. And this is one very interesting uh, thing that I will show you later on. First of all, I want want to show you all other um, important directories that you might have on your machine. As you can see, Aqualung, for example, does have its own configuration directory, uh, which is called .aqualung. So if you want to save the Aqualung music player library and so on, you need to copy over the .aqualung file or the .aqualung um, directory and the files containing in there. Adobe for its Flash Player uses also an own uh, configuration, um, configuration directory. As you can see here, all the cookies basically are saved in here. And if you want to save some keychains um, and some passwords for your wireless uh, connections and so on, you need to save the gconf directory. If you go to the gconf directory, you can see the gconfiguration file basically. And it's uh, an XML based structure and as you can see here, uh, I have my nm applet uh, directory here and in this configuration file here are all my um, passwords saved in um, for my wireless connection and my wireless connections itself are also um, are also saved in here so if you have special configuration files that you've done with your network manager let me show you this if you go to edit connections you can add new configuration files special configuration files for wired or wireless internet and those are saved in this directory so it would be nice also to have them saved so the .gconf directory is very important. The .gconf D directory isn't so important, so uh, this one you don't have to back up. There's a uh, directory for GIMP. If you have GIMP installed, uh, it saves its own um, files in there. And there's a .gnome2 directory. And this is a little bit tricky sometimes because some applications, especially some applications that mostly used on GNOME, save the configura configuration files also under the .gnome2 directory sometimes. So 
it's nice to look in there and as you can see here key rings are saved in the dot uh, gnome 2 directory as well so if you have some key rings here it would be nice also to make a backup of the dot gnome 2 directory then you have some other um, files in there as you can see Silfit has its own configuration files so if I want to save my, f uh, my, my, my account data and so on I need to save the dot Silfit directory and if you created some SSH keys or you are working with some um, secure networking uh, client or you have a server th that you connect to and you have uh, exchanged the SSH keys you need to of course also save the .ssh directory which has a known hosts list where it saves all its known hosts and uh, also the uh, SSH keys and you know this are basically the most important files there might be if you are using KDE or Qt applications there might be also a .kde directory where they save uh, their configuration files in so if you are using um, KDE applications it might be also very handy to back up those but the most uh, safe way to back up everything every conf configuration file of your system of your user account would be just to make a backup of the whole directory so let me go one step uh, up and as you can see here this is my home user directory and I can save it somewhere on my um, USB stick and can compress it um, make sure that you have all the rights necessary if you want to compress it somewhere and save it somewhere and don't save it in your home directory because this will be a recursive uh, end uh, a dead end and a never end ending story so save it somewhere on your USB stick, USB disk or whatever and one way I want to show you is how you can save uh, your home directory with all its configuration files and all its um, all its uh, permissions and so on uh, via the network and via SSH again so let me open up a terminal here in this directory and there's a nice little tool uh, called rsync you can type it in and it will give you a list of options and there are a lot and lot of options but I will only show you a few options so that you can start um, start experimenting with it so let's try to copy or to make a backup of all my configuration files make this a little bit smaller to my SSH server so what do I need to do first of all I need to type in rsync then the command because I'm I want to make a backup I want to archive all my um, stuff basically in my home directory I'm typing in the option minus A and because I want to also see a progress nice progress of um, the files which are which have been uh, copied over or which are in the progress of copying over I'm also giving uh, it the option minus V and then I need to give um, rsync the source directory basically and this is this one here so slash home slash leshek and then I need to give it my target directory or um, yeah my, my, my target um, basically and the target can be an SSH server but it does not need to be an SSH server it can also be a USB stick or a USB disk drive thumb drive whatever you have and I want to save this here on my uh, SSH server in this case so I'm typing in my username my IP address of my server and then it's by the way the uh, Mac mini machine that I'm running here also uh, which is my SSH server for my network and yeah I want to copy this basically over to my somehow the terminal got stuck just open up a new one this isn't working um, 
var sync minus av source path and then the target directory and what's very important is that you give uh, the target directory a directory name so in this case it would only copy uh, the whole content of my home folder to the public directory but this is not what I want so I want it to have in my um, in the folder name uh, backup so I'm typing it this in here need to give it my password and as you can see it's building the file list and then start starting with uh, copying it over and as you can see the minus v option does it does its thing here with showing the files that are copied over now and it takes quite some time I guess but in the meantime I can show you another really cool feature of rsync and why to use rsync because rsync had a, has a nice feature it can or it normally in the in the standard mode if you are running this command again it will only write those files to your SSH server which are newer than the files that you now uh, have or new files that you have created so basically it's doing an incremental backup or it's very useful for incremental backups so only store the changes or only uh, make a backup of those files which are changed or which are newer than the older ones and don't touch the older ones so you don't need to write big uh, every time the, the, the big archive of your home directory to uh, your backup media and this is also very important if you're using USB sticks or external uh, USB disks if you are using rsync so there are also some other options if you are have having trouble with this uh, feature there's an option called minus C for rsync let's go to the man page of rsync and I want to show you the minus C option oh, there it is and as you can see here the minus C option creates a checksum so that uh, it's not looking at the date of the file when the file is, uh, was created to make the backup or to decide uh, if the file has to be rewritten or recopied over but it's making a checksum of every file so this takes a little bit longer but if you're having problems with the normal date uh, uh, comparison then the checksum comparison works uh, better way better then so this is basically rsync I think it's uh, finished now and as you can see here uh, it's also it also copied over my mp3 files here and you can see how many bytes ha have been sent and how many received <laughs> also and the speed and the total size and yeah so I made a copy of my home directory here and if I want it back I can use the rsync commando again and can just bring those files back over my SSH um, server so this is one way to do this there's a nice clever new other way to do this with also supporting uh, rsync and incre incremental backups and it's a graphical way basically and it's called simple backup and you can find it under the menu system uh, preferences of course synaptic package manager and in the Synaptic Package Manager, you can find a call, uh, an app called an app called S Backup. So let me search this up and find it for you. And this little application can just backup also over the air if you install the S uh, backup plugins fuse it will also allow you to install over the or uh, to um, use the network uh, a network drive uh, SSH drive or whatever to save your data just hit apply here and here again the file will be downloaded and automatically installed and as a backup not only allows you to save your own home folder but it allows you to make a whole backup of your complete system so with all applications installed and everything so th this is basically for the complete backup of your Lubuntu system and this is very powerful 
this application because it not only allows you to create this backup once but also to create a scheduling plan for doing this backup regularly. So let me find this under the menu. I think it is in System Tools. There it is. Um, the simple backup configuration. This is the first step that you need to do. Go to this application and here you can simply set the basic um, configuration files. So as you can see no backup profile found. So you need to create a profile for the back backup to work. So what you can do is uh, some general options, do a full backup at least once every x days, in this case the default is 7 days. You can use a compression format ju just like gzip or bzip2. You can split the archives if you, are, uh, if you want to save archives on a FAT32 uh, partition for example you might want to split those um, as you can see here to uh, 4 gigabyte file size. You can then include and exclude um, directories that you want to um, have in your backup. So normally those uh, four files or those four directories are used for the uh, for the backup. So the dot uh, var, um, the dot home for your configuration files, uh, user dot local and etc. Uh, etc is also the global configuration files are stored there and use a local um, some games might be stored there and in .var mostly uh, the apt package archives and so on. Then you have an exclude deal where you can uh, exclude some uh, stuff like path like the dot .media uh, the slash media path where you might have your USB sticks or something else plugged in so this wouldn't be nice uh, var run, var cache, var spool, var temp so the temp directories uh, normally you don't want to save those um, files. You can also exclude file types, so like mp3, rv, mpeg, mkv, awk, iso, whatever. If you don't want one particular file type, for example, I don't want the file type, um, there are standard file types, uh, but you can also type in your custom file type, like for example, uh, the temp files. I don't want to have temp files. And so I can just simply edit this and say I don't want to have included temp files. I can also exclude files with a regular expression. As you can see here, there's some uh, nasty uh, command line um, tricks that you might use uh, to um, exclude some directories with this uh, expression language. And there are some other options that you can set as well. Then, which is also very important, a destination path. So the default destination path is var uh, is slash var slash backup and you can of course change this. You can use a remote site as you can see SSH works as well here. So I can put in my SSH uh, server if I want to or I can use a local backup directory if you want to save it on an, uh, on an, um, on an external USB disk or something like this. You can then set the scheduling, so daily scheduling, do backups daily. You can no s you can uh, turn it off as of course, and you can have a custom um, schedule. This is uh, one for the this is one for the experts that uh, want to configure their cron uh, scheduling themselves. But I leave it to simple. This works pretty nice. Then there's a purging option, which allows you to purge old backups which are older than 30 days, for example. And there's a report which uh, will give you an email if a backup succeed, su succeeds or if something goes wrong with a backup, it, it will send you an email. This is especially useful if you're having a server somewhere sitting around and you don't, uh, you aren't in the same room and uh, you want to have an email sent if something goes wrong with the backup or something like this. So. S Backup, Simple Backup is a really really nice application. So if you want to make or create a full backup, you can use S Backup. And I showed you as well how to manually with rsync backup your home directory and what are the important files in your home directory which store the configuration files of your applications. And I hope you enjoyed this screencast and yeah, thanks for watching.